also has an ordinance in front of them that I will be asking for uh, passage on uh, without any objections. I would like Mr. Mr. Tarbell, thank yes. you, sir. I, I had, I just did, I wanted to wait until the public speaking session was over, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, uh, we were asked to uh, try this for a year and we would reevaluate or evaluate the, uh, the results um, at the conclusion of a year. And the results, I think, um, can be measured in a lot of ways. One, uh, in a statistical manner, and that's important. And the other is um, what the potential downside is otherwise. Uh, is there a potential, is there a downside otherwise, and, and what might it be? And I think that's our charge. That's where the police leave off um, and we pick up in terms of what the repercussions are to our community otherwise. My sense is that <clears throat> the repercussions otherwise are dramatic um, and are, have the potential of causing great harm in the future uh, to this community. And I base it on, on one item more than any other. There are several items, but one that really stands out to me. Um, my personal you know, activity on the street I think it speaks for itself, um, my, my background and the amount of time that I spent on the street. And I think, I would argue, my knowledge of street activity is, um, relatively speaking, and it suggests to me that the, um, especially the 30 plus years I've been in some very difficult neighborhoods, arguably the most difficult neighborhoods in the city in terms of the street activity and, the, um, and some of the violent activity. I think um, an ordinance like this has the potential of affecting an awful lot of young people, um, male and female, that are perhaps not in the system yet. They're not in, in the criminal justice system yet. Every day they wake up and, and walk out onto the street, their in, the influence to be part of that system is overwhelming. Their influence to be um, persuaded by negative activity, drug dealing, use activity and the like uh, and what else that might lead to uh, is pretty overwhelming. So how do we address, how do we intervene on behalf of those young people uh, that are parts of a dysfunctional environment? Do we make it easier for them to get into the system and have that first mark on their record that as has been suggested affects their ability to get a job perhaps to go to school, uh, perhaps where they live. If it can be shown that an action on our part, an ordinance of some kind, increases the likelihood of that, the evidence to the contrary, in terms of its good effects, has to be pretty compelling. And it seems to me, the way I read it, We've got upwards of 2,000 people that are now in the system, that were not in the system before, that are subject to all the ramifications of that. And we have literally a few dozen who have been locked up because of something more serious. I'm compelled by 62, the confiscation of 62 guns, but in the context of what else is going on here, I'm not. I think that our attention to other enforcement issues would probably uh, result in the same kind of success and without the other, without the perspective downside. The, you know, I have said, I think uh, it's fair to say I've been as active as anybody on this panel in encouraging us on this panel and the community at large to support the police any way we can to give them the tools they need to be effective. But that must be accompanied by our ability to make adjustments otherwise in terms of what's the best outcome for the community. 
And it's clear to me that the downside of this in no way measures up to the good that might be accomplished. I have never seen more judges weigh in on a, a proposal on our part that might be contradictory. Not in the eight years I've been here. I've never seen the prosecutor show less interest in enforcing an ordinance in the eight years I've been here. I'm all too well aware of the jail requirements the jail needs and the reasons why we need them. Um, when we're talking, we're constantly, especially those of us who are on the panel, um, are talking about how do we measure up the Denver, Seattle, Portland, and some others. And we had an earlier discussion about where we might be spending our energy in terms of housing uh, creation in the, in, in the center city. And one of the reasons why those areas are so successful and we point to them all the time is because of their doing that. They're spending their time creating opportunities, creating options. Their attitude towards um, drugs, particularly marijuana, decidedly different than ours. Their crime statistics are the following. The most recent outcome of the statistical measures, Denver, in the category of murder is 40% less than we are, and the majority less than across the board. In the case of Seattle, their murder rate is 20% of ours. In the case of Portland, their murder rate is 20% of ours. It speaks for itself in terms of what we need to be busy doing, and it's not this kind of influence the last statistic I want to mention is that what I saw the Associated Press quoted as saying a couple of days ago, and that is that in the dangerous drug category, marijuana, I believe, was ninth. Alcohol was fifth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Uh, now, just uh, so you all understand, uh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. So you all understand, there are 50 states in the United States. Mr. Tarbell mentioned uh, three uh, that uh, I believe was Denver, Colorado, and Seattle, Washington. He mentioned two. But the other 47 states uh, have similar laws uh, that Cincinnati has, the other 47. And a number of those states, their crime rates are way down. The issue here, folks, is an additional tool to assist us as, uh, in our city to deal with this issue. And it's about personal responsibility as well. Uh, accountability. Uh, those who are f fresh in the system, get it expunged. They can do that. Uh, so the bottom line is, folks, uh, we, wanna, uh, we wanna stay focused on what we're attempting to do here, which is to, to um, give out law enforcement additional to Mr. Burney. 